Hey everyone, it's Coach Matt over here at Primal Athlete Training Center and PrimalATC.com. I really wanted to applaud and commend everybody for sending in your emails and for sending in your comments both to YouTube and to Facebook. Um, you guys are doing a tremendous, tremendous service to other throwers all around the country and all around the world who come to YouTube who maybe don't have coaches or maybe don't have the best training tips and ideas that are passionate about the throws and that come to YouTube to watch videos and to learn more about the throws. We want this to become a great resource as well as PrimalATC.com to become a great resource where throwers and coaches from all, all over the world can come, learn more about the different throwing events and learn how to both improve on their own and to teach their throwers how to become better. Now, out of the many questions that, that we've received here at Primal, the number one question has to involve coming out of the back of the circle. Whether it's coming out of the back of the circle and losing your balance, coming out of the back of the circle and not having enough force to drive down the middle, or coming out of the back of the circle and falling into uh, the circle. Uh, basically losing your balance and falling down into the circle. Well, those problems, if that's a problem that you're having, it all has to deal with the same, uh, same answer, the same solution to your problems. And basically, it has to deal with shifting weight. Throughout the course of the discus, you shift weight a number of different times. Basically, just like when you walk, if you were to take one step forward, you shift weight onto that foot. Then the other step, you shift weight onto the other foot. And then you shift weight onto the foot again. So you have to constantly be shifting your weight as you walk. It's such a natural movement for you that you probably don't even think about it. But you are shifting weight. Every time that you walk, you're shifting weight from foot to foot and from side to side so that you don't fall over. Now, if you were to try to walk without shifting your weight, what would happen? You wouldn't be able to pick up this back foot. You wouldn't be able to move on to your next foot. So, as you can see, we shift weight in a day-to-day -day basis when we get up from the couch, when we get up from the table, when we walk, when we run, when we skip, when we do all of our drills, we're shifting weight. And just like you shift weight when you walk, it's very hard to push out of the back of the circle. It's very hard to keep your balance in the back of the circle, and it's really hard to drive out of the back of the circle if the weight isn't over this leg. So for a right-handed thrower, we're talking about shifting weight onto the left leg. For a left-handed thrower, obviously, we're talking about switching weight onto the right leg. What we're going to do, guys, we're going to show you a great drill, and this drill goes along with the previous video of coming out of the back with the instep, but a great drill and a great te technique that you can use that you can take out to the circle with you and improve your throws right away. Now the drill itself involves our good friend, the plastic water bottle. The plastic water bottle filled up with water or filled up with sand or whatever you might have lying around is an ultimate, ultimate training te technique. This little guy, cheap little plastic guy, comes in so handy when you're teaching the throws. But basically what we're going to do so we're going to get in the back of the circle, okay, so you're standing in the back of the circle and for our purposes today, it would be like we're throwing this way, so we're throwing over our head. So we're doing the full throw, we're in the back of the circle. What we're going to do is we're going to take the water bottle and we're going to put it, hopefully you can see this on the screen, we're going to put it way out in front of, for me, that left foot, right-handed thrower, so it's in front of the left foot. Now, what you have to think about is the three L's. Now, somebody taught me this just a little while ago. It's something that I always taught to my throwers, but it's a great way of thinking about it when you're in the circle. Your three L's. Low, left, and long. Okay? Low, left, and long. Now, that all has to deal with keeping great center of gravity and shifting your body weight over the left leg, your non-power leg. So what we want to do in the back of the circle, we want to get low. Low center of gravity. Great athletic position. We want our upper body upright. We don't want to be hunched over. Our upper body, our chest and shoulders are up. Our knees are bent and we're low in the back of the circle. 
We're going to explain why this is so important in just a few minutes. We're also going to, after low, comes left. Now with left, that means that we shift our weight and we open with that left knee. So the left foot turns, the left knee turns out. And long has to deal with our long right leg, our long power leg. Now, we're going to show you a few times. I'm really going to exaggerate this so you guys get the idea of being low, leading with the left, and having that long right leg. If you can see that bottle, what we're going to do is we're going to try to kick that bottle with the inside, with the instep of our power leg. And it looks like this. Low, discus stays back. So as the discus is back, we're going to lead with that left leg. You notice that my left arm and my left shoulder is right in between my legs. It's not leading first. The left leg is the first thing to move. That left knee and that left foot will turn. So I'm not leading with the upper body first and dive bombing in the circle. I'm leading with the left leg. So we're low. We lead with the left, and we shift our weight onto the left, and then we kick out with the inset. Okay. Show you a few more times. We start in the back, we get low, lead with the left, and a long right leg. Low, lead with the left, long right leg. Low, lead with the left, long right leg. Now, why is that so important? Well, that answers all the questions that you guys have been sending in about coming out of the back of the circle. By getting low, we get a lower center of gravity. Okay? By getting low, we're actually able to keep our center of gravity low, keep our balance a little bit better. By opening up with the left, we keep our weight, we shift our weight onto that left side. Now, this is the most important part of the beginning of your discus throw, and I'll show you why. What happens is that you are low and the weight is on a bent left knee. Everybody try something for me. Everybody stand up, keep your legs nice and straight, don't bend your knees, and try to jump as high as you possibly can in the air. Can't jump that high. Why can't you jump that high? Because your knees aren't bent. In order for you to extend the leg and extend your hips, you have to bend your knee and bend your hips. The number one problem I see with new, newer throwers is they're standing up nice and tall in the back of the circle. And when they go to shift weight, their legs aren't bent. They might get this leg around, but now they're trying to drive down, they're trying to run down, they're trying to explode down that circle on a completely straight leg. You can't run with your legs fully extended, you can't jump with your legs fully extended, and I certainly don't want you to be able to think, or to think that you can bound down an eight-foot circle with your leg totally extended. So, by leading with the left, getting low, and extending that right leg, you're able to drive better down that circle. Now, the same reason why it's important to bend that left leg and that left knee so that you can explode and extend it and get down that circle is the same reason why it's important to keep that right leg nice and long. Just like runners with their stride length, the longer your stride, okay, the more you stride, the faster that you become. The more power that you put into the ground, the more force that you run with, and the longer your stride length, the faster that you are going to be. And it's no different than in the back of the discus circle. This is that power through the ground. Left leg is bent, and you produce force into the ground to drive down that circle. This is your stride length. Not only are you pushing off of the bent leg, but you're also kicking with the instep of the right. So not only are you driving with just the left leg, 
and not only are you kicking with just the right leg, you're using them both at the same time. And by using them both at the same time, you're able to produce a lot more force and keep your balance so that you can drive down that circle in a nice, fast, efficient motion. Alright guys, thank you so much for checking out these videos. Uh, again, keep those questions coming in, keep those comments coming in. Go to PrimalATC.com and sign up for our newsletter. You'll get daily tips and daily articles emailed to you. Uh, we promise we don't sell your email addresses or any of that funny stuff. But you're going to get these emailed to you every single day. You can check your inbox, take this tip out with you to practice the next day, and improve your throws on a daily basis. So check out Primal ATC and keep these questions coming.